Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Variety Podcast. I am uh, host number one, Hannah, joined by host number two, Josh. Hey, what's up? Hey, 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 and host number three, Hunter. Hey, hey, I thought you were actually going to introduce the guest and then I will, I will. No, 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 no. We are joined by a very special guest today. We are joined by my sister, Hello. Sarah. Hello. Yes. That's Sarah, not my real. Sarah, no, thank God. <laughs> Sarah is our resident expert today because today we're going to be talking about future food. So uh, Sarah is uh, learning how to be a nutritionist and talking about food and go, is doing some food writing right now. Mm-hmm. Sweet. So, yeah. so we figured we'd have her on for a good time, but in order to make it a little bit more nerdy, we're going to talk about the future of food. Future. Yeah. Actually, that is the exact first thing I thought of when we hear this topic. When we hear this topic, Uh, SpongeBob in the future. So, (laughs) Krabby Patties are still going to be the future food. As long as they're not Chrome, that I'll be okay. (laughs) Krabby Patties are future food. But in the future, everything is made of Chrome. Everything. Well, we already have Google Google Chrome everywhere, but we don't Uh. need Chrome. I don't want Chrome burgers and you got chrome it was cast. Yeah. you got chromecast and see yeah. we're, we're moving there yeah. yeah no don't like it don't like it but yes yeah, so we're gonna be talking about the future of food and there's a few sort of different categories that i think that the future food falls into uh the first one i want to talk about is uh this idea of like a single bite is all of the nutrients you need mm. i can think of a few examples of stuff like that does <laughs> anyone well okay <laughs> I do argue that a hamburger has all your basic, a cheeseburger, excuse me, has all your basic food groups on it. What if you don't get L-top on it? You don't get what? L-top, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle. It's standard. L-top. Then you have no fruits and vegetables, and what are you doing with your life? Exactly, but some people are crazy and do that. I guess pickles are technically a fruit. (laughs) If you make the burger out of all of the parts of the cow, you might still have all your nutrients, just saying. All so, of the parts of the cow. All of the parts of the cow. That's really sketchy or, there. I don't. So this know sounds like that. future food. Where we're just very nutritious. It's gonna be just really take a cow, furry, really fuzzy, <laughs> like there, compress it be... into a burger. <laughs> a whole cow. Yeah. It's like meal. Yeah. Uh, whole cow. All the parts. You can get a lot of village. You get a lot of fuzz on your on your taste uh, buds. Yeah, there. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not that part. Cow hair is probably not the most delicious hair. And not no, like the, no. even among hair. Yeah. No. What? What's the most delicious hair? Frog I mean, I've eaten my fair share of cat food, uh, cat hair. It's cat not hair bad, is one of the honestly. things in the world that's a, a condiment and an accessory. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> anyway, okay. uh, for me, the most the most obvious example of this idea of like all of your nutrients in one bite is I don't know what they called it the whatever they ate in the Matrix. Oh, the goop. Yeah. I called it slop they- oatmeal. They bowl refer to it as, oh, yeah, a bowl of snot. It's like, if you close your <laughs> eyes, it uh, almost tastes like oatmeal. Yeah. Like big bowl uh, of snot. Very runny eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So that was but definitely one like example. Chicken, but it tastes like chicken. Because nobody actually knows what chicken tastes like. Maybe That's why chicken like tastes like everything. Super processed chicken. So do you guys think that that's where food is going? Where, like, it's just going to be, like, nut- I mean, almost the idea of, like, nutrient tablets. You're just like, quail, I hope not. Quail, you know, people have tried that already. There's a drink out now called Soylent. Heard of it? Definitely yeah. uh, aptly named. And I, from what I've read, I think they did that on purpose, uh, doing that callback to Soylent Green. But, you know, okay. so- no people in it. It, but but no, there's a drink to the person. And it's about 400 calories of beverage and claims to be a meal replacement. And I did the math on that. I was like, 400 calories three times a day. That's not enough calories. And no. there there have been criticisms that it's not really enough nutrients, which our understanding of the human body is still limited. So wouldn't right. bank on it. In general, I feel like for the average human being, 1,200 calories in a day is not enough. No. <laughs> yeah. Not normally. Um, Maybe if you're... I think, <laughs> I think that's what, like, my, my like, weight loss program is recommending for me. <laughs> Um, if I want to lose like two pounds every week, which seems right. like it might be unhealthy. 
Uh, it's on, it's on the, yeah, this is like, they're, they don't let you try and lose more per week. I'll say that. Right. <laughs> they're like, that's, that's the max they go to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was the, uh, daily re- calorie recommendations for men and women, 2000 for men and 1500 for women. Yeah. Or 1600 I was thinking. Yeah. But that's also if you're completely sedentary, which a lot of people, I are, am. So. I mean, right, right. Well, there you go. I really am. I'm trying to get better, but yeah, that's, uh... Well, even if you're just mildly active, like you move around your house and lift laundry baskets occasionally, it counts as something. It doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, that's no longer completely sedentary. You're going I'm very, and stuff. I'm, I'm very animated when I'm teaching, so. There you, there you go. Burn <laughs> those calories. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, Hunter, you would remember seeing, um, I guess the, what was it, the season three opener? Where uh, the aliens take over, have taken over Earth, and uh, all they they're paid in pills, which is all they. Yeah. Eat. Season they three opener like of what? Season three opener, Rick sorry, Morty. of Rick and Morty. Oh, okay. I knew exactly what he was talking uh, yeah. about when he said. I know pills. you did, but I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's so like, they oh, all they they use pills. Have big pills for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they would have to be mouth. big if they were gonna have all your macronutrients yeah so right. so here's a question on the whole like um so sarah you were talking about the the pill that you can take or the, dr- the beverage right yeah mm-hmm. yeah what do you guys think about willy wonka's gum okay they didn't gum. they didn't ever wasn't really the, wasn't like the, the point of it was like the blueberry thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's like it's still experimental but the idea was that it's a full like three-course meal yeah. and i believe in mm. the yeah, I, I want to say in some form of media, I don't remember if it was a book or a movie, they talked about it being like a meal replacement. Like you get all of the calories and all of the deliciousness. And and I mean, in the movies, you know, Violet Beauregard talks about like, I can feel the soup, like it's so warm and nice. Well, I think the question you have to ask is like, if people could get their food, get their meals like that, well, and, and Willy Wonka's might actually be a good option because you still get the experience of the meal. Well, right, that's what I was going to say. I mean, so the thing, well, sorry to cut, cut you off no, right here, ahead. but I was going to say, you know, like, you, you sort of get it. Like, I remember, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, I remember her talking about the tastes, the different tastes, but I don't believe she really gets to experience like the texture and i thought maybe she did that. but it's been a long she time she mentioned right? something about she... feeling the soup running down her throat or something okay because like somehow say, the like, food was I... in the gum so which is say, definitely like, I, would love, which is... I, I love like you know being able to experience food right like, right right yeah right eat, eat and you know have the texture and activity of yeah it definitely food. seems impossible <laughs> um but if it were possible do you think that like in general people would move to that or do you think that so one of i was looking at you know various different things on the internet and one of them was like the you know future implications of you know where food is going and what does that mean for society and they talk about like we're not going to need chefs anymore if we can use like a replicator and and star trek which we'll get to to create whatever we want well, for the record, we don't technically need chefs now. I mean, you can buy Chef Boyardee off the shelf. You know, True. People have chefs because they like eating really fancy, intricate food. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, We've never needed, never needed chefs. But. Unless you were like a French aristocrat or so something. So you think that you like... literally starve. Like, but. Yeah, but again, like, they, they wouldn't necessarily... They didn't, like need need it like there's they never been yeah, have, an actual physical need yeah, so you think that no matter have, um, what the future of food is we'll always have chefs yeah I well they um they so. talk about that in in star trek it, even in the series that are set in a later time you still get lots of people talking about like oh you know the, the meal really isn't the same unless you cook it yourself and like captain cisco's uh father you know runs a restaurant on earth and he's always like, you feeding your kid that replicated slop? Like, you know, it, people always love the the culture and the the whole experience of food, including cooking it and preparing it yourself. Yeah. If, yeah. if anyone thought for a second that Sarah was not qualified to have this conversation yeah. with us, she knows more about Star Trek than I do by a long shot. That love love me some sci-fi. The, the gauntlet has been thrown. No, I uh, rewatched. No, the gauntlet has been placed, and I bow at your feet, Sarah. <laughs> You're the expert, Sensei. Just on Star Trek, though. <laughs> Just on Star Trek. Yeah, my yeah, whole yeah. life, Star Trek. Going, and the, yeah, going back to the whatever. pill, uh, food in pill form, or food in like candy form, where you, you, yeah, it's great to get the, 
you know, get the, the nutrients and the taste, um, you know, get your new, get the nutrients in are, is important. Getting the nutrients is important. Uh, getting the taste is, is probably, probably, I, I can see that being therapeutic for a lot of people because, mm-hmm. you know, they have problems like, if they, I guess if they don't feel like eating, I think the experience of food might help them, you know, get back to eating like they should. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you know help calm calm them down, uh, or stimulate or stimulate more appetite. But I think the, the one thing that I read um, was that the, it could be a problem with getting your calories. Can you get all your calories from you know that from the, from those pills or that those right. ta- or whatever you're you're using as your quick meal? Yeah, because we already right, have so the argument. Yeah, because there's the argument of vitamins and minerals and protein and things like calories, that. Calories, yeah. But calories is like, as as the physicist here, calories are like legitimately a form of energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's what they are. It's a measurement of energy. And you're not really going to get energy from a pill unless I mean, you there's can, some weird magic going if you, on. If you condense you just, the bare bones nutrients enough, your pill would be like super heavy, but like, you know. Yeah. That you can't just go to Yay, the horse sun. pills. You <laughs> can just go to the sun and get your energy... That's true. Uh, if we could there. all learn to photosynthesize, like, so, like it, Superman, it, you can just go over to the sun. <laughs> if only there was a just way to get your pills can... and sunbathe. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what Sunny D is? Yes, <laughs> pure sunshine. <laughs> I think they sunshine. actually. I want to say they actually do something like that in Futurama. <laughs> oh, I was gonna get a Sunny D commercial. Oh, they're like, we'll just I mean, take it. And... Yeah, right. They lied to me. Yeah. Also, the Kool Aid Man doesn't but burst through people's walls. Hopefully. Oh, thank God! Yeah. Oh, I want to say that, like, if the pill thing did happen, and I think something like it will, like, you know, the the drink, the meal mm-hmm. replacement. We have meal replacement bars. Someday, you know, somebody will find just the right balance where that is theoretically all you could eat. And I think people will use those things. You know, especially people who are very busy. Mm-hmm. People who have like an hour and a half commute and a ten well, hour then, day. You yeah. Know? Well, and this is something that's completely, completely foreign to me, but I was watching, like, I was watching a really a- reality TV show about <laughs> glass blowing, right? And they say, they're, one of the instructions was to make some glass sort of sculpture based on your favorite food. And one of the contestants was like, oh, I don't really like food. Like, what? eating is a chore. Like, I wish I didn't have to do it. And I'm just like, it's a completely, completely foreign concept to me. Any of you who see me in person, um can attest i love love food but like there are people out there who are just like yeah not really interested and there are definitely days where i'm like i don't want to cook anything so i can definitely see it having a place now for me it's the same whenever somebody's like oh i don't really i don't like music i don't like listen to music i'm like like how do what yeah i I get that like people are different people are different you know people find their joy in different ways no they're aliens Yes. I mean, they could. They might also be aliens. They, That's, yeah, they're very yeah. obviously are. Possible. I get. I feel like I get a lot of that from like my students because they're all like, you know, eight and nine. And I'm like, what do you like to do for fun? And they're like, nothing. And I'm like, that. That's just a common yes, answer. Do. You do something, right? You Definitely. tell me you never have fun. It's like no, yeah. they just sit in a chair in a in a empty room, and just every now and then I get one. Just watch YouTube. Yeah. Every now and then I get one where I'm like, do you just lay on the floor and watch the ceiling fan go in circles? And they're like, yeah. Actually. <laughs> like, no, you don't. Different You're lying. Yeah. Weren't There's the, no um, furniture in my room. Weren't the, like, I, I think we need to show uh, Hunter and Josh a picture of the Play-Doh cubes from oh, yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys, have either of you guys seen those? No. How we the original series them. Star Trek. What the, I mean, comes it came out in the '60s, right? And so, like, all of the the CG was not really good CG, and so they tried to use practical effects. And I, I kid you not, it's basically like they had Play-Doh, that was their food. But it was that idea of they're like it's nutritious and delicious, <laughs> right? Everything you need in like a single cube, but they mm-hmm. were apparently really tasty. I well, believe. and um, in around the time that Star Trek came out, of course, you had the Apollo missions happening, and it was mm-hmm. very chic to kind of be into this astronaut food, this food that you plug into a hole in the wall and it adds water, you know, or mm-hmm. like astronaut ice cream, mm-hmm. yeah, like, tastes like yeah. styrofoam. Like but, that was kind of the cool <laughs> thing. And so they had these cubes to be, not because they really, I guess, thought that that is what people would actually eat, but because that was kind of a big. Thing at the time and people were into that kind of the future it wasn't seen as like 
gross. Like, ew, freeze-dried? It was like, whoa, it's new and cool. I mean, to be fair, I love freeze-dried strawberries. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Freeze-dried fruit is so good. Big uh, fan. Not sure how uh, I'd feel about freeze-dried meat, but fruit is good. I'm a little confused <laughs> about all of the words you guys were saying. What, what, what are you confused about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Freeze-dried? Freeze you don't know freeze Have you ever had, like, apple no. chips? Or banana chips? It's like that, but instead yes. of just, like, chipified, it's freeze-dried. But it's kind of similar. It's almost, like, powdery. There's when you I, chew I, it. a little okay. con- not totally certain what the process is, but it was, it's about, like, freezing things and, like, also evaporating the water out of them at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you, don't um, so you end up with a like a very styrofoamy, like crumbly kind of texture. Mm-hmm. But it's actually kind of lovely on certain items. Right. Instead okay. of it being kind of wet and falling apart when yeah. it thaws. I'll just have to bring you some freeze dried fruit at some point, Hunter. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's an experience. So I, I, okay. have a, I have a theory about what the Play Doh cubes are, though. I am seeing these, okay. actually. I found a yeah. picture. Yeah, and they're all throughout the series. They're like, oh, we made you this delicious meal, and they give them a plate of Play-Doh cubes. I I thought it was fruit, actually, at first. I I think that's what it's supposed to be, because they can actually get other things out of their um, food synthesizers. Like you see in one scene, um, Nurse Chapel gets some ice cream out of it, and at one point, Captain Kirk gets like a chicken sandwich and coffee in the famous Tribble episode. Um, So I think the cubes are just supposed to be like fruit and vegetable knockoffs. Because I don't know if they would be able to synthesize anything that has, like, anatomy, like a fruit does. I feel like if you got chicken in a chicken sandwich, it would be, like, it almost seemed like the heavily processed kind of chicken. Like, it wouldn't be a chicken breast, you know? Mm-hmm. I think maybe the like technology wasn't quite up to that at that point. But they could make yeah, you, like, an was... apple cube, you know? So, the, so all the food was in those just weird shapes. It, it wasn't like, like, they weren't actually making, like, oh, this is the... This is the like oh I want I want a a, a a chicken sandwich, and you press the button and there out oh, out pops out a chicken sandwich. It's more of a, a cube that tastes like a chicken sandwich. Oh, I think it would have been an actual chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. Yeah, the ice cream in the one scene was like it's a bowl of ice cream, but I think those are <laughs> yeah, just supposed to be like, like fruits and vegetables because they're not going to replicate an actual piece of broccoli. Yeah, they co- they copied that in um, Legends of Tomorrow because they're on a they're in a futuristic ship, uh, but it's a time ship, so they're going through time, but they can create whatever food they want. Um, mm-hmm. It seems like they're you know, it seems like it could be like three like three D printing food, which yeah, I mean, it kind yeah. of yeah. Well, it has to do a, with molecular like molecular structure basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, and I think that's closer to what they get like with the protein resequencer in early Star Trek as opposed to the replicator later, where it's literally just made out of energy, you know? So it's more, the 3D printer would be more like the protein resequencer, where it just kind of spits out the molecules in order. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Take one thing and turn it into another thing, rather than right. take nothing and turn it into a thing. Right, or just take electricity, basically. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. I can see us Who's doing that. I, I don't know. I know all we do is mainly just 3D print, um, you know, plastics and you know other mm-hmm. materials, but nothing, nothing that we could eat or um, right ingest. That is probably going to happen before too long, honestly. <laughs> well, yeah, and people yeah. are already doing the like um, the like factory grown meats. Isn't that a yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they grow a muscle in a vat from some cloned cells from an animal, and it's Which like is... just the chicken breast, not yeah, like a or, chicken. Well, they uh, for. Um, I saw an infograph for for like you know beef. They cut like a little a little sliver of of uh, like muscle from uh, like the cow. And they put it in a dish and they and they you know clone it or um, uh, and so they get enough of that and they can actually like mass produce it to you know feed a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And they only eat uh, from from only one cow. Yeah, yeah, and it would use far less resources in general than like yeah. actually raising a cow. <laughs> Right. I'm totally down for, for lab grown meat because yeah, it's the meat industry like is not as humane as it could be. And no, there's sure. a lot of waste and environmental stress that comes with our current, you know, lot, uh, you know, meat industry with all the livestock. Oh yeah. yeah kind yeah. of the two things that like, so, so lab, lab grown meat, I feel like I am down for, I feel like another thing that is possibly where the future of like the actual future of food is going is like eating a lot of bugs. 
Yeah. Yeah, insect meat, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, not totally sure how I feel about that one. I feel like there's already oh, I like I feel. I'm down. I'm down. I saw somewhere <laughs> someone put like a like a cricket powder into a, a milkshake as like a protein powder. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the bug like, flour is kind of a big thing. Just like yeah. color down with that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess I don't know. I have mixed feelings. Just, just try. Anna, you've eaten a cricket, haven't you? And masters. I, I don't think I ever have it. Maybe I have. You never had a uh, like a salt like a they they, they sell uh, crickets that are like salt and peppered. Or, no, I know, I know. Or, uh, yeah, chocolate yeah. Covered. They're not bad actually. They're very yeah. crunchy, kind of like popcorn. Yeah. No, I think I have had one before, but it's I don't know. There's something about like just the principle of it. You're like, it's a bug. It's a bug. Yeah. There, there are definitely certain things that I don't think I'd be able to eat. Like if somebody cooked up a cockroach really nice for me, no, no, like have no, this uh-uh. poached mm-hmm. roach, I'd be like. Flip the table eat. over. The idea of it as like a protein powder is interesting though, because it's something that you probably don't notice unless it gives like off a particular texture or smell. But it's like mm-hmm. for the most part, you could hide it. Well, yeah. we can bring up the movie Snowpiercer here. Everybody okay, talk to that? me about Snowpiercer. Oh, oh Snowpiercer. Yeah, Snow where, okay, so even though these people are in the future and it's literally their only source of food, when they find out what their protein gel blocks are made out of like literal ground up roaches because that's the only other species alive on the train. They are not happy. They're still not happy. Just the idea of it. We have this guttural instinctive revulsion towards Well, yeah, it's it's similar to what I was going to say about, um, I was thinking about Doctor Who and there's a particular episode where uh, they get stuck in these cars and they're there for years and uh, they recycle their urine and they drink or they, they re- recycle their urine and they like turn poop into like wafers and it's like they eat it that's like what they eat yeah, and it's like yeah. we're already kind of doing that like that's what we do on the space station i was poop i don't think but, no 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 there's but no you way, like there's filter no way, yeah. urine enough to make it drinkable again right well yeah. and so and it's if you like think about a closed system where all of your inputs and outputs remain in the same environment theoretically you could keep remixing those Add right. infinitum. Although you do lose some energy in the process, so at some point you need to add. Yeah, energy but it's one of those things that, like, in the episode, the the Doctor Who, the girl who realizes she's about to eat a poop wafer, uh, puts it <laughs> down. Uh, good, and good. you're like, understandably so, but like, in reality, we're not too far from that already. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm this still been not... into a cookie, so. No, no, yeah, I'm, I'm still, still, you're still not selling me on this. No, I don't want to live in a snow piercer where I'm eating roach bars. I don't want to live no. on. I don't know if I, I, as much as I like the, the alien universe, I don't want to get on a ship where I'm eating my waste. Because uh, I think that's what it was suggested. That's that's what they were eating when they were eating their eating their Everything meals. Everything is recycled. Or you know, in in the Matrix, which they didn't know until they were told, but the right. the dead or liquidified to feed the living which is ugh. right no yeah oh, well and yeah. the same thing actually that. happens with like chickens and stuff today but you know we is don't need to talk happens? about that they no, do it's, feed it's, like it's, animal it's, remains to no, sorry i'm thinking oh, of uh, so i'm still on the matrix things the matrix thing that was, that was that's the thing. what the that's Dude, what the yeah. machines feed to the babies right yeah, that's yeah, that's what um the Morpheus was saying when uh, he was like, yeah, Neo, it's all real. I I was horrified, but then I watched them liquefy the dead to feed the feed the living. You see this little baby 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 popped out, and you know he's just kind of like a dead Got person, just kind of liquef- liquefied in one vat, and and yeah. just the baby's just fed with um yeah yeah. yeah. It's yep. not what the humans okay. make for themselves. It's yeah. what the robots are feeding yeah. them. Because the okay. robots yeah, have no sense of decency. All, all I no. remember about that is I, I only remembered that they, the robots used like people as batteries. Basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't remember the food part of that. Well, I mean, you got to yeah, feed so those that, babies somehow. It was only the mentioned feet. very briefly, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And no. I, honestly, it, it's, it's been a minute since I've seen The Matrix. I don't know no. why that Great should be like a weekly thing. I know, honestly. Maybe a maybe a monthly thing. <laughs> maybe 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 no, maybe, maybe a year, no yearly thing. Excuse me. Mm. I think maybe mm, quarterly. I, quarterly. Yeah, quarterly. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, every couple it's months. Little, Biannually. It's a little, no, it's a little too depressing for every couple months. Maybe. The Matrix. I'm watching a more depressing the, than the, the whole the whole trilogy. <laughs> 
And You're talking about just the movie or the no, whole just trilogy? the first one. Like the original, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. No, the, the whole series, maybe time. you watch every five years. Man, you gotta do the yeah, whole okay. series. You gotta do the trilogy and the Animatrix. I have never We're seen the Animatrix. I was gonna say, if you've yeah, never seen are. Animatrix, you need <laughs> to because they also go way more in depth on a lot of. <laughs> oh, so, excuse me. Mm. Thought I mean myself. Bugs. They, you know, people eat that in a lot of sci fi movies. Yeah. I mean, and and eat, it's like positive yeah. in a lot of places. People eat and, bugs in a lot of countries right now, like just like, in America. Yeah. Like 119, like, which, do, anybody know how many countries there are in the world? Because I, I feel like that's. say 170 not, something. Yeah, yeah so like 100, more maybe 170, 180. I More countries than not eat bugs as a regular part of their diet. And it's only in uh, the West that okay, we're like, oh, that's gross. So it's over half of them. Yeah. Yes. I, I, yeah. yeah, I think if it's, if it's the right kind of bug, like, you know, beetles or crickets or I'm trying to think of some other ones. Yeah. What are, what are some common, like, common uh, ones like that people scorpions eat? Scorpions and lollipops. Yellow so jackets. I've seen that as kind of novelty. Mm, uh, yeah, you can eat yellow those. jackets. Larva? I feel like larva. <laughs> yeah, larva. Big. So like silkworm larva. As long as it's a, um, as as a good kind of larva. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, I, and I, and I, I, don't, I don't want to get too political about this right now, but unfortunately, I wonder if... Uh, the U.S.'s aversion to eating bugs is because primarily the people who eat bugs are like not I don't know I feel like the, when I think about people eating bugs I'm thinking like it's mostly Asia and maybe like some of Africa so I wonder if there's like a racist element involved I don't know My, uh, but I think more than that it's just that it hasn't been a traditional part of our diet it's true the western right, right, right. Palette, we especially if you're talking about Hannah our heritage is like English and German right they didn't live in places that had a lot of edible bugs so it just wasn't part of their diet that's fair so you get you introduced know, to it and you're like what that's a bug I'm not gonna eat that yeah, yeah, there's always a certain Sorry, Going I was just up. gonna say. I wonder if they eat bugs in like Australia. Oh, so they got. So they have definitely have, they have the to choose from. sorts of crazy animals. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking it up now. If they can, if they can catch them, <laughs> or is Bear Grylls Australian? Bugs don't get... uh, he's British. No, oh. sometimes I can't tell with the accents. He he said he served Australian the, he, or... he served the crown. So who? Yeah. Oh well. Bear Bear Grylls. Well, Australia no still has the British flag as part of it. I don't know if they still follow the royal. Well, we do in America too. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna try to get back <laughs> on topic. What's interesting to me because I feel like we've talked a lot about Star Trek, and that's definitely one of the big like sci-fi things. And we talked a little bit about Doctor Who. Um, in Star Wars, I we already I discussed that's not future food. That's well, a long, long time. Ago. A long, long it's, time ago. It's a long it's, time ago. They say it is. It is. It, it's one it's of also those a galaxy ones. far, far away. Yeah, yeah. It's and almost I, like I a completely that actually, different. Yeah, I think that the food that they eat kind of shows that, actually, that it was a long, long time ago. Because I was looking at it, and it, it looks like a lot of it is, um, like, fruits and, like, local meat, right? So, like, anything you can find right. that's a little animal, put it on a stick and roast it kind of stuff. Well, they, they do try it. Well, Chewbacca tries to eat porgs, and they right. won't let him. <laughs> yeah. They, they and that's just, like, that's just what nearby. Well, and the Ewoks try to eat Han Solo. Yeah, so, this is true. You know. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's a really probably, big stick, but they they probably have killed uh, a you know humanoid creature and eaten it just to the yeah. probably do that a lot. Some, right yeah. and left, yeah, right, right. Much like the crunchy food. exoskeleton. Oh, and actually, uh, I want to clarify <laughs> because uh, well, we are nerds, and it just is our place to be picky. Um, and, <laughs> And I mean, I, I did say it probably first, but uh, yeah, I also corrected it. It is not a long, long time ago. It's I know, I know, I heard you. In the Weird Al song, it's a long, long time. I know, and that's so. why <laughs> I think everybody gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember that was a trivia question one time, and I got it right because I knew the difference. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yes, yeah. thank yeah, you. But it I seems like pretty it. much all the food I, I could know. find was, was local meat or fruits in Star Wars. Which definitely gives the impression that it was a long, long time ago. Well, and Star Wars has this interesting thing where you get very different kinds of existences. I wonder if it's almost supposed to be like, the, the impression I get from like Battlestar Galactica is it's like, okay, is it in the future or is it in the past or is it really talking about now? Because especially if you watch the new series and the old mm -hmm. series, it's like, 
Anyway, but I wonder if Star Wars is kind of doing a similar thing where certain elements are obviously much more advanced from us, but you still get this kind of like classism that's very obvious mm-hmm. in yeah, Star Wars yeah. where like obviously the people on Tatooine are not eating replicated steaks. Right, well right, that's right. what I was going to say is the, they're the, the rebels and so they're kind of like on their planets and not they... I, on Tatooine is. Well, no, but I'm just saying in general, like the people you're following in the story are yeah. rebels. Well, you can look at it as people that are in a more like, you know, I guess technologically advanced part of space like Coruscant. They're right. probably eating like, you know, the high quality foods and mm-hmm. and whatnot. But you've got people like well, Tatooine ta- 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 and yeah. um, Tatooine and what was that? What was that desert planet that Ray was on? I can't remember. Uh, it started uh, with an S, didn't it? Jeddah? Or maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Is it like is the it, Volkswagen? No, <laughs> no. The planet it, it that she was on was in, the, in, in the first. Was, in the first um, sequel, I'm trying to remember the line now because I, from the second one, from the last Jedi, it's like I'm. Oh, it's, ja- it's it's Jakku. I just Jakku. Like that. Yeah, that's right. It was J- Jakku. Uh, she Jakku. eats uh, this like uh, weird this meal where she has to add water to her 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 bread her blue powder and it turns into a muffin. Yeah, um, they get which is actually pretty portions. interesting. Yeah, because that's yeah, they, the whole with, thing with that she's rations, trying yeah. to. Yeah, the the portions with uh, that's yeah. how they get paid. Yeah. yeah. So I think the so, point is that they might no. have more. Sarah. <laughs> Muted. They might have more okay. uh, technologically advanced food in specific places, but because the series, for the most part, follows these kind of poor vagabond rebels, they I imagine are kind of reduced to this diet of like just kind of whatever you can find. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd point out in Star Trek, too, they do have the replicators, but they always keep emergency rations on board, too, that are, like, the same crap, like, add water. So, Mm -hmm. no, that stuff doesn't go away. I I also, actually, with the whole add water thing, it just makes me think of, uh, well, again, Futurama, because I've watched that a whole lot more than I have watched Star Trek. We know. It's like they get, get, like, these these steaks, like, it's a little pill, they just pour like a tiny drop of water and like a whole steak bursts out and they just I'm, I'm, actually, I'm down with that. Huh? Yeah, like a little spudgy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, Except yeah. way faster. That's, oh, that's, wow. that's smart. Sony oh, cool. needs to do that. That makes me think of Back to the Future where they rehydrate the pizza. I, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Back yeah, to the Future too. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. supposed to be like now, so I don't no, know. No, that was, that was, 20, <laughs> that was 20, 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say that was like five years. Did not happen. We got hoverboards though, so. Uh, did yeah. you? <laughs> Technically, we, got, we had three D. We did get three D printing. Yeah. Although in 2015, in the movie, they still sent faxes. So. Hey, I mean, <laughs> I that? probably oh, actually man. ended up sending the fax in 2015. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I feel like yeah, at some point yeah, we need to have it. an episode about <laughs> old future predictions that are about years already passed. <laughs> I think that'd that'd be, that would be a fun one. That would be fun. I, yeah. yeah. Still talk about a lot of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, so, oh, go ahead. I was gonna think about. I was thinking about like actual like food science that's going on right now, like that's mm. coming out. Yeah, so we talked about the the lab lab chicken. Mm, right. Yummy. Lab uh, Sarah, chicken. do you know of any other sort of like science advancements going on in the food world right now? Well, uh, you could, I'll just bring up really briefly this stuff like the Impossible Burger and Beyond Meat, who are trying to basically chemically recreate meat. So it's not a veggie burger that's made out of vegetables. It's been like synthesized to be the same protein and fat types and like the same heme iron that you would it's find. It's not a veggie burger. It's literally a fake meat burger. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, you know, I've tasted them and they're not quite like a real burger, but they're definitely a lot more like it than a veggie burger, which I love okay. veggie burgers. Yeah. You know. Veggie but, burgers are gross. Um, no, you know, you know, as long as it doesn't try to be meat, sometimes that works yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting okay. conversation in our house. Sarah and I live together and we talk a lot about food and I'm a huge love love me some meat and some dairy and sarah's um mostly vegan uh mostly vegan so we talk a lot about like (laughs) as long as vegetables aren't trying to pretend to be meat like if a veggie burger wants to just like own itself as a veggie burger i don't have a problem with it you do use veggies trying to right yeah exactly veggies are so great anyway if you're gonna ask me like if i want fake cheese on my nachos or if i want avocado on my nachos like i'm gonna go with the avocado 
because the fake cheese is just not as good. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's how you say it, too. Do you want fake cheese or do you want right. avocado? Well, and there are really good dairy substitutes, but they're usually really expensive, so I don't get them. But anyway. Yeah. <sighs> so so it's just, oh, yeah, um, the Impossible Burger. I still need to try that. I do, too. I haven't tried one. Yeah. I think you I was get going a lot of places, to, but I don't think I ever actually did. Yeah, go to so, Hardee's. <laughs> mm, I'd rather have real meat. So we've talked about it a little bit already, but just in our last few minutes here, what do you guys want the future of food to be? It sounds like we're, for the most part, all on board with lab-grown meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, not so on board with bugs. Well. Uh, I, well, Han well, Hannah isn't. I'm, I know. I'm, 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 I'm more open to it. It depends. It depends. I'm Can just I point do, out just do something? A, just, just do a blind, t just do a blind <laughs> taste. Now, I, I often compare bugs entering the American palate to sushi because there was definitely a time period where most people in the U.S. were like, raw fish, that's disgusting. Aren't, don't want to get sick. Like, what is that? Um, and I think people are probably going to go through a similar thing with bugs where we are going to be the old people that are like, ah, oh, I don't want to eat that. And all the teenagers bugs. are going to be like, mom, it's fine. It tastes great. You know? I mean, but, um, it's all about how sanitary it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and I mean, I mean yeah. chicken isn't particularly sanitary, but we cook it. You I'm know? sure it depends mm. on how you prepare it. Neither is and pork. bugs are just a lot more ecologically sound a protein option than animals. And a weird thing yeah. about bugs is uh, they are often more nutritious than meat, and a weird thing they have that one-ups them on meat is fiber. Like, meat almost never has fiber, but insects, like, they have a lot of fiber hmm. in them. So it's, in a way, that. kind of superior nutritionally to meat. Assuming. You're really trying hard to sell the bugs, aren't you? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm admittedly not super excited about it, but I think it's going <laughs> to happen, and it's got to happen. She, so. Yeah, she's got she's to gotta sell it to Hannah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm on the fence, I'm on the fence. Just try my cricket I'm pancakes. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping for more, uh, for just more uh, technology uh, to help us, like, keep food fresh, at, you know, longer, and maybe help us, you know, want, learn, when, like, keep us, a, help us with our timetable as far as, like, okay, this food is fresh, it's safe to eat. Okay, you guys are getting closer to, you know, where you need to eat it or give it away or do something with it because it's getting bad, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like right now our biggest issue, I don't know if it's an issue all over the world, I think it is in a lot of places, but definitely an issue in the United States is food waste. And if oh, we yeah, can, it's terrible. Yeah, and if we can try and get rid of some food waste, I feel like that's kind of where our, our near future needs to go is just not wasting as much as we do That's yeah kind of don't yeah donate it not buy what we yeah. need donate what we don't yeah. use uh compost like organic yeah, stuff sure. uh yeah. well, just to and, help and so much of helps that, all out so much just of that is just together. cultural like a lot of yeah. food is wasted yeah. at the farm level but yeah. a lot of food is also wasted in restaurants and in people's homes where they yeah. just buy more than they can eat and just throw the rest away so yep. i mean trying to convince people to stop doing that is definitely yeah. and a hell battle yeah. Yeah. but that's pretty much our show for today thank you all so much for joining us uh sarah thank you for joining us do you want to plug your your blog really quick absolutely so guys i write the blog practically vegan where i talk about all kinds of fun and sometimes serious topics much like we did here uh you can check me out on facebook instagram twitter or visit my blog at sarahpamplinwrites.com backslash practically hyphen vegan yeah and she comes she writes a lot of recipes as well oh um, yeah and as someone who lives in her house they are tasty thank you so definitely recommend that um do we know what we're doing next week guys we're doing a new episode next week what that's crazy look forward to that it's gonna be great <laughs> yeah. um but i think that's it for today any final thoughts yeah uh, final thoughts next week is long running animated shows. Okay, cool. That's next week. Oh. Uh, so we'll see y'all then. But until then, nerd out. Nerd, nerd out. out. Bye. 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 Bye.